Market season is almost upon us. Our next craft show is in less than three weeks. I can hardly believe it. So that means it's time for me to start cranking out some projects. I wanted to start with some cutting boards, pizza pans, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I think this is very charming. I'm using Dixie Bell's French linen and a an old gnarly paintbrush, and I'm just doing some dry brushing. This is sort of a heavy dry brush as I really do want opaque coverage, but I don't want any harsh lines. I want this to sort of fade off into the background. This does mean that this side of the cutting board will not be usable, but of course, if they wanna use this cutting board, they can always use the other side. This is for decorative purposes. So I'm gonna continue doing the dry brush technique until I've got the board fully opaque and then I'm gonna do a stencil over it. So the next step is actually to give it a nice sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna, this is gonna take off that, that sort of grit, grittiness of it and that leaves a nice surface to stencil. I'm using a Maker Studio stencil. Um, give us this daily, a daily bread, which I love. I'll leave a link in the description. It is the perfect, it could not be more perfect of a size for this cutting board. I think it'll also be great for rectangular ones and possibly even some Lazy Susans. So you may see some of those projects coming. These are really nice because this is like a flawless finish. I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's coffee bean instead of a black for this just to kind of give it um, a nice warmth but not too much harshness. But this is a great way to crank out projects because you can see this is more like screen printing than stenciling. So I'm using the Dixie Bells thingamajig tool, which is sort of a rubbery angled piece that drags on these stencils really nicely, moving the paint around the board so I can get really good coverage on it and not too much waste. Um, makes it easy to get into soft spaces. And look how perfect that finishes. It really is amazing. And then I'm, you can see, I didn't have to wait any time. I'm just gonna go over it again with 220 just to make sure that it is nice and soft before I add a top coat. I am using DIY Paints Big Top, which I've poured into a glass container. I am slowly moving all of my paints and top coats into these small mason jars. For me, I think it's gonna be pretty and it's gonna help me feel a little bit more organized and with everything being consistently the same size and the same look, there's a little bit of, you know, wanting that pretty factor when you're spending all this time organizing. I chose the DIY Big Top because it is it has a really nice finish for this board and I'm gonna do three thin coats um, over the board after each one dries, I'll apply another one, sanding lightly in between. And I decided I would add a little bit of heather just as decoration. I had this on hand. I have a lot of greenery on hand. And so you'll be seeing that I'll add these accents on a variety of these pieces, just because I do think it's nice. It adds just a little something. And so I'm wrapping it with jute. You can see this is just literally just spinning it around the board. And then I'll tie the end with that beginning piece also, so that'll keep it on the board nice and tight. And here is the finished project. I think it came out really nice. I expect this to be a really good seller. I'll need to go get some more boards and make a bunch of these for the next market. In my last video, I mentioned that my husband made these shelves out of wood that was left over in the garage from another project, which actually was found wood to begin with. So now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the leftovers. I'll start by giving everything a nice deep sand with 80 grit sandpaper. I am gonna make sure all the edges are rounded off and everything is smooth. I would like to keep a lot of the grain and the grunginess of these, even though I'll be painting over them. Um, but I like the character of all the old marks and it being found wood, it not being perfect. I'll use DIY's Dark and Decrepit Liquid Patina to create a nice dark stain on this. You do wanna make sure that you mix it up first because sometimes they do settle apart. So I'm here I'm just using a paintbrush. This is water soluble, so it's not an oil base or anything like that. I'll be painting over this. Uh, I'm, what I really want is the next step that I paint over, I want to be able to come back to this nice dark brown. I have these old spindles from a table leg in the past, I have four of them, and I'm going to just use my chop saw to cut them down. I'm gonna actually get all three sets of legs. We have three cutting boards here. I have three sets of legs that I'm gonna cut out of this one, and I'm using a stop 
in order to do the length measurements. That way, each of my legs is automatically the same length to keep my bench from being wobbly. To the good days, here's to the sorrows. If this is a mistake, I know about tomorrow. I don't wanna fight no more, cause I don't feel the need no more, no. Just wanna make it stop. Maybe it's something in the water. And for these boards, I am gonna use Miss Mustard Seed in the color Grain Sack. I love Miss Mustard Seed milk paint, and we currently have it on sale as we are getting ready to stock all the new formulas and powders. So most of our Miss Mustard Seed is at a very deep discount, uh, 40 to 50% off in most cases, and it's really easy to use. If you've never used milk paint before, it is simply uh, equal parts water and powder, and then you mix that up and you start painting with it. I know it seems intimidating because it doesn't come in liquid form, but it really is that easy. So here, again, I've added a quarter cup of water, and now I'm adding a quarter cup of powder, and I am going to lightly mix that up, and then I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes. Milk paint does, because it is a powder, it's going to take a minute for that powder to absorb into the water, and so I just typically mix it up let it sit there for a few minutes and then come back and mix it again and it is good to go. And what I love is the creaminess of it. And for me, it's all about the chipping. And I'm gonna show you a technique to get almost always the perfect chip. Um, and you, you can decide, in this case, I've gone pretty heavy on the chipping, but you can kind of decide if you want more or less when you're doing it on your own pieces. Now I'm gonna do the first board without doing anything to help it chip. So I'm just simply going to paint this on. I'm using our Klingon brushes, which are always my favorite. Uh, I love them because you can leave that brush sitting in water. They are made to sit in water. The bristles are held in by resin and not wood glue or anything like that. So they rarely fall out and you don't have to worry about your brushes falling apart or getting damaged by leaving them in cups of water. I hate to clean them, so that's pretty common to find multiple brushes sitting in water by my kitchen sink. Anyway, don't worry about the little um, the little bits of minerals that are left aside when we do our light sanding afterwards. Those are going to go away, and this will actually give you the softest coat of any paint you've ever used. I know it seems strange since it comes out kind of lumpy and bumpy, but once you give it that nice soft 220 sand afterwards, it is like silk, like butter, like the softest thing you've ever touched. If you are a tactile person, you will love using this paint because the end product is just so dreamy. So painting it on directly over the stain without any resist, this is gonna have little to no chipping. For whatever reason, when it absorbs into the wood like that, it really gets a good grip and doesn't do any chipping. We're gonna do two coats on this board without any resist. And you'll see that it's you can sand it lightly and it'll be nice, but since it is a pour, going on a porous surface, you know, basically raw stained wood, there's gonna be no chipping. If you want chipping on a porous surface, you're gonna have to add a resist. And so on our second board, we're gonna add a resist. And in this case, we're gonna be using Fusion's Clear Wax. You could use any wax you want, the more wax you add, the more resist there is going to be. So pay attention to how much wax I'm adding and realize that everywhere I'm adding this wax, there is gonna be at least chipping and cracking, but it may not stick at all. Definitely anywhere it's going on thick, it's not going to stick. And you're gonna see when we paint it that it's gonna be an automatic resist. So if you don't want this much chipping, don't put on this much wax. It's entirely up to you. And as I'm adding the second coat, you can already see the resist is happening. There's no way that the paint is gonna to stick to that area where the wax 
is resisting the paint. So you can guarantee that in those areas, the paint is going to crack. A heat gun is a great way to force cracking on some pieces, but you can see on my board that was that didn't have any wax resist on it, there's really no cracking. You might see some little tiny chipping, not chipping, but cracking, but honestly, it looks like a nice clean board. And I'll show you up close in a bit. But on this board, you can literally watch the paint cracking as the heat gun comes to it. And to me, if you don't love watching paint dry, you're not using this mustard seed. Because I'll tell you, I would sit and watch this paint dry for hours if I could. It is just so fun to see how it cracks and makes that board come alive in a way that is positively authentic and old looking. So this is our board that did not have anything on it. It had no resist. And you can see some faint little tiny cracks, but you're gonna have no chipping. Now this board is the one we did add the wax. Everywhere that we added wax, you can see there is amazing chipping and cracking happening. This is gonna give you that old, old wood finish that you really like, or I should say that I really like anyway. We had a good run, don't say we didn't. I was your first love, and you were my first one. Cheers to all the memories, the venom and the remedies, yeah. Promise I won't forget. Now I'm gonna add some green sack stripes using JRV stencil, the green sack stripes. And you'll notice because this is such an open stencil that if you were to swirl or pounce, it would honestly be very difficult and it may slide around on you. Um, I'm not taping it down, I'm just holding it with my hand because honestly taping it down doesn't do that much to me. You need the downward pressure on those little lines in between. So I find that using my stencil brush and using a basic dry brush technique, which is how you're stenciling anyway, but instead of swirling, just doing a sideways motion um, and, and filling it in that way. And you can fill it in as opaque as you want. I'm going with a light distress here on this, um, just kind of how I want it, because I'm gonna put something over it. This seems to be the best, best way. And here I am also using DIY paint in aviary. It matches the legs that I have for this, which actually were luck it's green, by Miss Mustard Seed on the previous piece that they are from. If you want darker stripes, be sure to add more layers of paint, not more paint on your brush. More paint on your brush will just give you unattractive lines. After I've got it completely dried and it's how I like it, I'm gonna give it, again, a good, nice sand with a 220. This is gonna keep it nice and soft. You should always sand between layers to get the softest finish possible. Now I'm pulling out another amazing Maker Studio stencil, and this time I am going to cut around it and just sort of isolate this one particular one, which is the French bunny in a crown with the laurel leaves. I think it is completely charming. Now I'm going to note on here, um, I know this is going to happen before it happens, and I maybe should have done the boards in a different order. It doesn't bother me, but if it's going to bother you, be careful when you're taping off or wait longer for the paint to dry all the way. The pressure of the 
the tape and the mesh adhesive, because I have not left this board any time to dry anywhere we had that wax, that it still is sticking, that pressure is gonna create an upward pressure and pull it off the board. So our boards are already chippy. They're gonna get even more chippy when I pull this off. So the one thing I would have done differently is I should have done it the bunny on the board that had no chipping first because the chipping basically stuck to the back of the mesh stencil, making that board less perfect when I did it. So that's the one change that I would have done. And the only reason I really taped it off, because it does fully stick to the board, is to make it easier on myself that I wasn't worried about going beyond it. With this thingamajig, it has such precision that on the next layer, I actually chose not to tape it because I didn't want to take a chance on getting any more chippiness than it already had. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, are these stencils really reusable? And here you can see that I'm able to go from one directly to the next and continue using it and without any problem. And then I actually go to the sink and I wash it off and I let it dry. It is important to let it dry upside down. That way the adhesive, as the water actually dries from it, doesn't leave it sticking to something else, whatever you have it drying on. And you can use it over and over and over again. As soon as these are all done, I'm gonna add a quick layer of Big Top over them. And I've decided at this point, uh, the brown, the, the layered chocolate that I'm using, just isn't enough against that brown background underneath. So I am going to do uh, another color over it. Effectively creating a, using this brown as a drop shadow. I didn't really wanna introduce another color. So what I'm doing is I'm basically applying my stencil just slightly off of the original so that it's a drop shadow effect. And then I've decided to use DIY's liquid patina in gold. And you'll notice this is a very, very liquid um, top coat. So it it's not as perfect as some of the others because it's a little, because it's so liquidy, but it does still create a really nice finish. And you can see, I'm just using my thingamajig, pulling it directly out of the jar and this time I didn't tape off around the edges and I'm just gonna apply it the same way I did everything else as a basic screen print. And I think considering all things considered, this is, comes out really beautiful. I probably could have done something to thicken up the liquid patina a little bit, maybe used some baking soda or other additive to the paint, but I'm happy with how it came out. And we know gold is big this season, so hopefully these three little pieces will still sell. And for the final step, I am gonna give these another light sand with 220 grit sandpaper to make sure they are ultra smooth. Any little bits are knocked off. And then I'm gonna use DIY's dark wax and do that fairly liberally, but I don't, want, I don't want this crazy dark, but I do want all of those little teeny tiny micro cracks showing on this piece. And it's a little too pristine looking for me. I, I just like it a little bit warmer, rusticer. Rusticker. Is that a word? I'm not sure. I think it should be though. What do you think? Now it's time to attach my legs. So I'm going to start by drilling some pilot holes in the corners, all four corners, and then I'm gonna drill pilot holes in the legs, in the center of the legs themselves. And I didn't seem to film it. I thought I did, but I must have lost the footage. I didn't have my countersink bit here. I had it at the warehouse. So I used a larger um, circular bit to, to actually sort of wedge out the top so that these screws would countersink. And then I'm gonna use some glue and sawdust to fill them. And I'll show you how I treat that later. I also am going to use wood glue to actually glue these feet onto the back of this. They are not gonna come off. The screw is actually really to temporarily hold it together until the wood glue sets. Once the wood glue sets, those things are on there forever. So this is gonna be a nice, sturdy little riser. And to get these to blend in, again, this is something I really probably should have done at the beginning, but I didn't think about it until it 
was at the end of it. So I have just added a little bit of the leftover paint that I had and then some wax and I'm getting them to blend in. Again, this is a super rustic piece. I am starting to question if it is too rustic though. I love rustic. I don't know that everybody else loves this rustic. So I would love your opinion. Should I repaint these into something a little more simple, a little less chippy? Um, leave a comment below if you think that I should keep them as they are and they will sell or if you think I should repaint them. I am not offended um, if you say to repaint them. I am just curious what the overall will be. I'm going to sell these for $19.95 each and I can repaint them. It's not a big deal. Um, obviously, I would hate to put in the extra work if I don't need to, but $19.95, they will be available at vintagebedesign.com as soon as this is live. Um, but I, I would love your opinion. I have three of them. Uh, these are each about, I don't know, maybe about 14 inches long, I think. The one is a little bit smaller, probably closer to 12. Uh, anyway, what is your opinion? And here is a look at all of our projects at the very end. Let me know what you think. How did we do today? Um, did you enjoy the projects? Did you learn anything? Leave a note below. Again, what do you think? Should I keep these as they are or should I give them a repaint? And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe to our channel. It helps me know that you want to see more of these videos. And I appreciate you sticking around with me today, even though it was a little bit of a hot mess. Thanks, guys. Bye.